to awakeness when I was in military prison, right? 2018. I was supposed to die. You saw a lady here, that is the mother of my driver, Yasin Kaoba, who was shot, thinking they had shot me, and he died. I was in prison, and it was going to go down like any other abduction. But thanks to the brothers and sisters in Kenya, you started massive protests, which protests spread to the entire world. That is the reason why I'm still alive today. And friends, it did not just start with me. You Kenyans have stood with us from way back in the 60s, in the 70s, when General Seveni and many of his colleagues were fighting against the reported dictatorship. You housed them, you supported them, you accommodated them, you have not stopped. Even today, you are still with us. Friends, we don't take that for granted. Please don't stop. Continue being our brothers, we will be your brothers as well. Now, the November massacres. We all know that this is a Ugandan issue, and we should be holding this conference in Uganda. It's very unfortunate that we cannot be in Uganda. We, can mourn, we cannot mourn our people in Uganda. We cannot talk about issues of human rights in Uganda. That is the sad reality we find ourselves in today. While we are here demanding accountability and focusing on the November massacres, somebody has said it that they did not start the massacres and the uh, extrajudicial killings by the Museveni regime did not start today, did not start with uh, 2021. It has been happening, including the massacre that took place in Kasese in November 2016, where more than 200 people, including women and children, were killed. Many of them were tied hands in the back and shot dead. It continues. The November massacre is just a big symptom of a long sitting sickness, a sickness called Museveniism in Uganda. So while we are here, ladies and gentlemen, we should look at all the, I mean, while I speak to you right now, one of my bodyguards called Jamshid Kapuma has been missing for 13 days today. He was picked by security, by soldiers in Ugandan military uniform. And of course, others with no uniform. It was captured on camera. Like many others, we have not seen him again. We don't know whether he's alive or dead. That is where we are today, ladies and gentlemen. Among the victims that have spoken, and many that have not spoken, they have dark, dark stories. In this room today, in this room, we have ladies who were raped by Ugandan soldiers and security personnel in this room. In this room, we have a young man who was castrated like a goat in this room. Many times, we keep such dark stories to ourselves, but many of them are in this room. He had asked me to call him out so that you people understand that we are actually not making up this. I don't know if you still want to raise your hand, my brother. But in this very room, you, you can stand from there. That brother is called Magese, was castrated. In this room here, we have men that have been raped, men that have been sodomized by the Museveni regime. That is where we are. And very painfully, we cannot talk about such in our own home. We are here demanding for human rights. But in our case in Uganda, I'll break it down. We are demanding for the right to be human beings. To be human beings and be treated as such. I was in Europe a few days ago 
and the demanding of different luxurious rights, animal rights, etc. Et we are yearning for right to be human beings. Right for which more than half a million of our mothers, fathers, and relatives were killed with the promise of a return for the rule of law, return to respect for human rights, and the same. So we are here today, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with heavy hearts. Hearts have been mocked. I mean, when they take you to those dungeons in the chieftains, for military intelligence, see a man. Those guys that torture will first tell you, here, we don't believe in human rights. We don't know human rights. We only know human lives. Yeah, it would be funny if it was not sad. But that's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. You all saw, and uh, Andrew was kidding about it, that General Seven came out and said, yeah, Bobby Wine was beaten very properly. That is a person that some people in East Africa call the father of the region. Maybe they are right. The father of impunity, the father of dictatorship, the father of lawlessness. That's General Seven. It will be noted that some of the torture is actually supervised by the Crown Prince of Uganda, General Seven's son, Mohozi Kanyuga. Many of you saw the prolific writer Kakwenza Mkilamasaika, who is now living in exile in Europe. He mentioned it that he was tortured and cut and beaten under the supervision of General Mohozi and Seven's son. That's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. We can go on and on and on about the pain in Uganda, but Dr. Messi J. Gaiden and I agree with him that we are not here to lament. But now that we are here, and Kamaswaka talked about it, he got very inspired, very motivated that he sees all the leaders, well, not all of us, but at least those that are still, and underline the word still, standing with the people of Uganda. We are here. Now that we are here, Wagwana. Now that we are here, mm -hmm. what next? This is a question that many of our people want to ask Chichi Echidako. What next? For starters, we need to realize that we are being reduced slowly by slowly. Back when Dr. Akita Beske was inspiring us to get into leadership, he opened our eyes and tasked us to open many eyes. We went ahead and opened millions of eyes. Maybe that's why the impunity went a notch higher. But now that we are here, and we know that millions of eyes are open back home and all over East Africa, what next? So much can be said. This conference alone cannot be enough. But at least if there's anything to get from this conference, let it flash a light where we are coming from, and that light will bounce back and show us where we are going. Because the further back you look, is the further in front you will see. 